Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's best practices webinar, a much anticipated one at that. It's the follow up to last month's webinar. We have a two parter. It was top transfer team, top transportation teams. These are the winners of the first annual top transportation teams award um, back in September, September 19th, actually, exactly today, uh, a month ago today. We had the winners of the larger school districts, so 100 employees or more. Today, we're featuring the districts from 100 employees or fewer, and I'm really excited about talking to the winners, what they did um, to help build a great culture in their, in their districts, and also just what's happened since the awards were officially announced in July. Uh, there was a great panel discussion in Reno, um, STN Reno's conference there, and so we're just gonna piggyback on that. We're gonna get a little deeper um, since then. So without further ado, if you could uh, move on to the next slide there, Bridget, thank you. I want to thank Bridget Moore, who's uh, working the back end, makes these things happen. Hopefully we'll have uh, Antonio Civitello join us later today. I know it's a crazy day, but right now I want to invite Donna Hackett, if you could join us, Andrew Kukowski, and Monique is also, as anybody knows, in school transportation. Uh, I was talking to someone in her office today, and they said Monique had a crazy day yesterday driving the bus. Um, I asked uh, Andrew and Donna if that is at all something they could relate to, and they didn't know what I was talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so um, we totally understand that. You have to. The name of the game is flexibility, and so we uh, we Monique can join us later. That'd be great. So we'll get to that in a moment. I want to start off really quickly, uh, just kind of laying a little bit of the groundwork. So for those of you who don't know. The Top Transportation Teams Award was something that was started by TransFinder CEO Antonio Civitella last year, just really thinking about how do we give more kudos to really the heroes of our day in our industry, which is school transportation leaders, their routers, their dispatch, their drivers, everybody that's part of that massive, massive undertaking of transport transporting students to and from school safely every day. And the feeling was just that, you know, hopefully the districts rec recommend, um, recognize them, administration, the community, um, but you can't do it enough. And so this was a chance to do that. And so surveys went out, uh, districts were nominated, and the winners are those that specifically um, had the highest scores um, from their team. So emails went out to every single team member within that transportation department and we're on a variety of things from company morale to benefits to um, leadership and then anonymous they were all anonymous and then we just crunched the numbers and literally where they fell is where they fell and by the way donna's team pembroke csd in new york had the highest they were the top top transportation team and uh, i know you don't brag about that at all you're very <laughs> humble <laughs> no you have a lot to brag about with that so um before we get into i'm going to ask uh, donna and andrew tell us a little bit about themselves and their districts but before i do that i want to make sure i remind everybody that these webinars number one are always recorded and you can get them usually a day later sometimes even at the end of today you can find them on our youtube channel which is very easy to find just go to transfinder.com at the top left is that YouTube icon. Click that and it's usually very high up on the list of videos that we have available. So you can catch last month's, it was a really excellent webinar, lots of takeaways. And I know today is gonna to be no different. Number two, um, the reason why you're attending this hopefully is that you wanna glean something from these experts about what they did. Um, hopefully they will even share their secret sauce even though they're gonna be competing with you in the Top Transportation Teams Award for 2024. By the way, if you go to toptransportationteams.com, you can find information on, it, it's now available to start to the process of um, nominating your district, or if you wanna nominate another district, we can start the process. But right now, we're already starting to get gearing up for 2024. So, um, as an attendee, you can still ask questions, um, and there's uh, a space allotted there for you to either ask a question. You can either ask specifically Donna, Andrew, or Monique when she comes down, or Tony, or you can ask it to 
both of them, or you have an idea, you have something that's worked for you. I love to get interaction from those who are attending. Um, and so if I see a question, we'll go, go to it fairly quickly. Um, or if you have, again, a, you have a tip that worked for you. Um, that's great. So please do that. And just to see if people are watching, if you could just tell us what the Tony likes to do. I'm stealing Tony's idea. And, you know, Tony always says, hey, if there's a good idea, do steal it. That's okay. So I'm going to steal Tony's idea. Just what's the temperature where you are? That, I'm just kind of curious. I think it was 55 degrees. And uh, New Bridget, what's the temperature in New York right now? You know? I believe it's around uh, 57. Yep. 57 degrees. So if you could just punch in what the temperature is and say where you are too. Kip, I saw you said it's 53. Where are you? And everybody else, just give us your, your state or your city, uh, Wyoming. All right. Um, just so I know everybody's here. So Donna, real quickly, um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your career path, and your district that you're serving. Well, I'm Donna Hackett from Pembroke, which is in Western New York, right in between Buffalo and Rochester. Uh, we have about a thousand students, 22 drivers, three monitors, two mechanics, and I myself am retired and transitioning into a potential new position of supporting our new supervisor. Um, it's been a, a one person operation forever. And um, through all the things that we know have, have transpired in this industry, um, it's, it's definitely time to move that up. So we're, we're doing kind of a, a model right now of how do we have somebody in there part time. And right now me being the part time is, is uh, definitely still training my, my new supervisor. I started um, as a school bus driver. I started subbing for three years, drove for 10 years. In that 10 years, I became a union steward because I have this silliness to always wanna learn more and help other people you know, love the job as much as I do. And then the opportunity came up to, uh, for the supervisor position and that was my total in of, okay, let's make everybody love this and you know open it up to them a little bit more than it's not just a job. School bus driving certainly is not. Um, so I supervised for 20 years. I retired this past July and have been training my uh, new supervisor that came in, uh, who is one of our bus drivers. Um, she was totally vested in where we've gone and who we've become and didn't want to see it change. We wanted to keep that internal. Um, kind of, yes, you want to see new things happen, but we didn't want to lose who Pembroke is and, and she's maintaining that right now in, in her training. So that's where we're at. Um, and you said, and I think we're going to get into this, and I think it's a great uh, place if anybody wants to ask Donna questions about succession planning, because mm -hmm. they're really, this is a model that I haven't really seen, and it seems like a really good one to make that that handoff, that baton we talked about yesterday, um, hand that off nice and clean and crisp, so there's no missed uh, gaps there. So well, thank you so much, Donna. How about you, Andrew? Yeah, so uh, I got bit by the yellow bug, as they say, back in 2013. Uh, I, I came to South Lewis, where I am now as a transportation attendant, uh, became a bus driver in 2014. I moved on a little bit and uh, went and, and took over a drug and alcohol testing program for the area. Uh, so I, I left South Lewis for about three years. And then in 2019, the opportunity to come back to South Lewis as a transportation, or transportation supervisor came available and uh, so I came back and uh, loved every day since. That's great, that's awesome. Well, before we get into the nuts and bolts here, I wanted to, Bridget, we, we have a poll question to kind of get a sense of, you know, put our finger on the pulse of where you are all at. One of the key things that when we talk about building a top transportation team, we talk about culture, we talk about morale. So we have a poll question here we'd like to ask about, how would you rate the morale in your transportation operation? Poor, fair, good, and great. So uh, if you could take a couple minutes to, to we actually, not a couple, a couple of seconds, take a quick moment. I'm gonna ask Andrew, if you, I asked you that question, uh, how would you rate the morale in your transportation uh, department? Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna rate it great. Uh, if, if I were to open my office door right now, I can kind of hear, I'm not sure if my microphone's picking it up, but it's full of laughter outside in our break room. <laughs> uh, that's pretty common. That's a daily occurrence, and then we love that. That's great. How about you, Donna? I totally echo 
um, what Andrew said. We have to some, I close the door more because they're being silly out there and having a good time than anything else. And of course, this uh, this national recognition is certainly picked up and pushed back our shoulders a little bit to just be more confident in ourselves. And truly, we're enjoying enjoying our ride. That's great, that's awesome. All right, Bridget, can you give us the, re do we have some results? We do. Um, so majority of uh, morale is at uh, good, 56% said good, 28% uh, fair, and 17% great. Okay, very good. We won't even talk about the poor. We won't even go there. Um, thank you. And so, um, you know, we, we when we were coming up with this poll, even we wanted to have a, a way to do this maybe down the road, because it could be fair, but improving. You know, so we're not capturing, we're just capturing where it is right now. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Well, if I ask you just a random, I know I asked you this um, previous to when you guys spoke at the STN conference in Reno, you know, how would you describe even just the word team? When you think of teamwork and, um, you know, that kind of stuff, what, what are the key components for you? I know you each had unique um, thoughts on just what is a team. Donna? Ours was definitely, I would say trust was a big one for us. I know there's other things that we've talked about in the past, but um, trust was a big deal that everybody knew I was transparent and decisions that are made are for the good of everybody um, to be, to make them a firm, fair and consistent um, situation. So when they trust that we're doing you know, the best we can for everybody. And even if they don't understand the whole picture, um, they understand that we're making the best decisions for them and ourselves as well. Uh, and of course, of course, for our district. That's great. How about you, Andrew? So I'm gonna build off of Donna a little bit and say that there's definitely an aspect or an element of trust, but I, I will look more at a team as a family. Uh, many different dynamics being brought to the table just like Thanksgiving dinner, you've got Uncle Johnny and you've got Aunt Sally that are, you know, bring those those wacky things, but you need those to to build a perfect plan. That's good. I like that. You know, it's sometimes when you can appreciate the differences and even some of the quirkiness, because sometimes, you know, some of those crime shows, you know, the people who are like the ones that work behind the computer and can, they might be kind of quirky, but they're critical to the team still, you know? And you got, you know, I used to watch this show called Leverage and one guy's called The Hitter and one guy's, the you know the one that knows how to break in the safes and the one person's the math you know so your team is not going to be all cookie cutter actually donna we talked about that yesterday about understanding the complexities of each person and knowing how to relate to them where they're at they're not all going to do things the way even your your successor is not going to do things exactly the way donna did it exactly how do you get to know that the, the uniqueness of each it, it takes time with them individually doesn't it Absolutely, and, and I love to use, you know, in New York, we have our 19A requirements with um, defensive driving reviews and things behind the wheel tests and stuff like that. That's an awesome, awesome I time to see how they do their job, of course, but to then also make that personal connection with them in some fashion. Not too personal, I learned, you know, I, I can't be all um, hugs and kisses with everybody, but you got to learn that about the person as well. How much do they want to come in? How much do they want to let out? You know, so I like That's to great. use those resources and time to absolutely have a one on one with them. That's great. How about you, Andrew? Yeah, I, I, I you know, spend a lot of time doing the defensive drives uh, one on one with the person, but I also stand back and watch how they interact with the rest of the team. You know, make sure that they're fitting in good, that the, the team's accepting them, uh, that they're accepting the team because that's really a key element that we want is, is everybody working together. And if they're just not a good fit, that sometimes doesn't lead to productive results. That's good. We're gonna talk about that because you, we, you both talked about this yesterday during our dry run, a little bit about the hiring process and even being willing to be a little picky, even in the midst of a driver shortage, that you still wanna be picky in your hiring process to make sure people are still a good fit for your culture. Um, Andrew, I think you said something yesterday about you know, they're not happy here. Can you talk a little bit about that for a minute? Yeah, if, they, if, if somebody's not happy here, um, we're not getting productive results. We're not getting good things to come out of that. Um, 
I would much rather have many happy people versus one negative attitude because that negative attitude is going to demolish the whole department. Good. Uh, before we go any further, uh, I did put together a little slideshow. So just of some of the winners, and this is when you guys, so we last month, you know, we had the bigger districts and um, this month we're focusing on the, the, the districts are 100 employees or less. And here's a quick slides of um, you when you were at the, um, at Reno, where you officially got the awards. There's Tony in the middle, Tony Civitello, Transfinders uh, President and CEO, Andrew and Donna right there next to each other, Monique. And then on the other side, we have John Ferguson from Klein, Anna Banner from Garland, and Todd Livesey from Franklin Township. They were on last month. Uh, next slide, please. And here is Monique who says, we are there for each other. These are quotes that they gave us on teamwork and, and being a top team. We're there for each other, we help each other, and we have fun. And I think the one word that stands out to me in that quote is we, right? It's we, there's no I in team, as my coach used to always say. Uh, next slide, please. We are the strongest team in my 33 years in this department, said Donna. What do you think that, why is that, Donna? We made some concerted efforts to pull it together and tout that we were going to be the best. Pembroke, we feel that we've got a, a Pembroke um, air about us that um, we want to uphold. And having worked together with these people for so long, we could really get down deep as to what that means to be Pembroke and that we want, and now that we have new people coming in, we had a, a good 20 year stint of all of us just working together. Now new people are coming in and we're finding not everybody does it the same, but we want it done Pembroke way. So I think that's where our strength came as we all embrace what we do is outstanding for our children and we don't want to lose any ground. Yeah, I like, and you use Pembroke like an adjective, like the, it's a Pembroke, is, are they Pembroke or not, you yeah. know? Um, I like that a lot. And Andrew, uh, next slide, uh, Bridget, thank you. Um, this was interesting to me. You know, we've had, we had surveys and we actually had on the last uh, webinar, COVID actually hurt one of the teams. They said, we're just kind of coming out of the, the negative impact that COVID had on their team. And that's reality. With you, it was the opposite. COVID boosted your team in a sense of making us stronger. So can you give me a little sense of, of how that happened? Yes. Uh, so, you know, COVID, good, bad, I'm not gonna get into the political side of it, but during the times where we were in, in closed down status, our team got together, delivered meals, using the bus right to everybody's house. Um, we didn't force any employees to come in and work during that time. It was all in volunteer status. So we had plenty of volunteers constantly. Um, so, so much so that we had three people on every bus um, just delivering the meals and it, it was great to see just our team coming together to do something out of the normal, out of their the normal expectation of a school bus driver, just to better our community and, and overall. Um, during the, the COVID times, as I'll say, we wanted to boost the overall morale of not only our department, but our community as a whole. So one of the things we did is we emptied out our, our bus garage, we decorated it with Christmas lights, and we had a Christmas show drive through for the community. Um, no cost to anybody. It was just to bring some smiles back just to everybody. And it's something that we now do annually. Um, I like we, that. Well, a fundraising effort. We, we collect food for our local food pantry when we're doing it. Um, but it, to watch people that you would never think are in the Christmas spirit, more of a Grinch, more or less. Um, just come out and hang Christmas lights all over the place uh, was was truly awesome. It's it's great great thing we do every year. That's awesome. Uh, you know, sometimes these type of crises can um, bring you like they can bring you closer together. It's an opportunity to show how much you really care about people, and people do rise to the occasion. There are times when you're like, maybe if there was no crisis, they never would have felt like there was a need for me to rise to the occasion. But sometimes that makes all of a sudden you realize. Oh, we really are all in this together. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, when we had, remember the, I don't know if you guys did parades where mm -hmm. we had parade, and I remember um, working, so we were remote. You know, I gotta say, I mean, I'm 
Tony's not on, so he won't even know I even said this. But leadership, I mean, you, he, I mean, he was a good leader pre-COVID, but rose to the occasion of how do you keep everybody feeling connected, even when it's remote, even when it's just, we all know that Zoom isn't always the greatest, you know, to connect with people or go to web like we're doing here. But there's still a way to do that, to make people feel like you care about them. You can, there's still ways to overcome that. And so, you know, I feel like our team also has really gelled together. But I was thinking about working from home and hearing the school buses go by my house as those parades and people were coming out on their, on their, it was emotional. I'm, I'm getting emotional. I hate when I get emotional. Publicly, mm -hmm. I'm getting emotional. Oh my goodness. But watching the school buses and watching people coming out on their doorsteps and seeing that, I will never forget that, you know? So, see. Our people that, brought normalcy to the, to the community when they saw that school bus out there. And then yeah. the simple ones, you know, we had dragons and rainbows and all kinds of different things going on and people tossing candy out the windows and, you know, yes. those the things just yeah. felt real. And when you had families out there and they knew our bus route, we told them what bus route we were gonna do. So you had pods of people uh, and made our hearts full of course, but we heard just nothing but praise for touching them with a little bit of, we miss the school bus, we miss our yeah. school, you know, and that was fabulous. Even kids missed getting on the, who would have thought? <laughs> you know, kids missed going back into school, which was like, wow. Yeah. No, so that was really neat. Um, okay, Bridget, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, oh, I should say this too. This is my little uh, commercial here. Here's a quote uh, that no one really said, um, but I am so glad my operation was named a top transportation team. They're an amazing group of people and deserve all the recognition for the work they do, said you, but you have, you, this is the attendees, but you have to be in it to win it. So again, go to toptransportationteams.com so you can get started in being considered for a top transportation team award. And one thing I should say before we go on to the next slide is that this is a great tool, even if you don't win, and obviously everybody enters with the anticipation of winning, but we are working with districts that did not win, but they're gonna get the results of the surveys that are anonymous, but Donna, Andrew, if you got the results back and you found out that one person or, again, anonymous, said, I wish we did this, or this, this part is missing from our, you know, we may be a great team, but we're missing this, wouldn't that help you to say, oh, didn't know that? Maybe there's a shy person that doesn't know how to ask a question and they don't want to put it in a, uh, you know, suggestion box. And so the hope is that we can help districts that are great already just become even better. Yeah, this yeah. was pretty cool. Next slide. Yeah. So now let's, I want to work our way back a little bit. So when we last, you know, when, when you were last interviewed, you were on the stage and you were winning the award and Tony was moderating a panel discussion with all six of you on the stage. Um, and I asked you what happened since then, you know, um, what ha so basically since winning the top transportation team award, and I'm sharing this and I have, you know, there's a reason behind this. I want people who are attending to realize that this is going to help you when you, it's not just a one-time award. It, it hopefully will be a year long or much more that you can use this to boost morale. But Donna, tell me what happened since getting this award. It, it really made us openly talk about how how proud we are to do what we do um it rejuvenated us in ways of it like re-energized us you know we started doing lunches again uh corporately groups of us doing stuff and making stuff and you know somebody brought the grill and we got the table and we got the this and the you know all that kind of stuff um we're in the middle of a fundraising benefit right now for one of our teachers um decorating uh people just jumping in to do these calendars and it just it it made it, it kind of grounded us in the yes we are that good and it's okay to to put it out there that you know um we have taken a couple bold steps in making it known that pembroke believes in what we do and how we do it for our for our school district so this award just took it to honest to goodness there was a little disappointment in this award because they all thought they were coming to reno um we thought this was going to be and they were hysterical, like, 
okay, I guess you better go, you know? <laughs> That's cool to have so many different people going, yeah, I would do that. I would do that. Um, so I got to tell you, it was, it was now, again, I think we put our shoulders back a little bit farther. We're definitely confident that, that we do do it well and we're not afraid to talk about it. You know, it's not a boastful thing. It's an encouraging, helpful, um, you know, carry the carry the torch a little farther thing and now with our new supervisor julie we're we're certainly going come on come on what are you gonna do <laughs> i think the word you used yesterday too was oomph it added some oomph oh, and you yeah. said shy people you said even shy people yeah. took it very personally that they are part of this team it was a confidence booster it really was because when when they heard that you know, really everybody said good things about us, you know, because it wasn't always out there. So who was answering how? And I heard at one point, well, that's kind of a dangerous thing to ask our staff what they think, because they'll tell you. <laughs> and they were super, super proud of what we do. And it just flowed right through the department to the new people, rejuvenated us, re rejuvenated us older folks. And um and just it's kept the ball rolling we are in a great year and i think it's because we wear that badge on our on our chest there that you know right. yeah we did this are we going to do it again you know that's pretty cool that's awesome yeah. you know and i think going back to what i said earlier and anybody who's like on this webinar right now who thinks like a little bit about that trepidation of if we ask and what if we don't like the results um and that is a concern so like, you know at the end of every webinar we ask you know how was the pace how was you know, was this informative? Was it used? You know, and, you know sometimes it, oh, that person only gave it an eight, you know, whatever. But you know what? It helps you because you want to, it helps you get better. It helps you look and say, you know, make adjustments and those kind of things. And like I mentioned, you know, we're going to be giving those results back to everybody. So you can tweak those things and, you know, give some voices to those people that maybe wouldn't normally share their thoughts on something. So, because they've been encouraged, be honest, tell us how you really feel. Andrew, how about you? Since you got back from Reno, it's a couple months ago now, um, what's it been like? Hey, you know, it's been, I echo much of what Donna just said. It's been very uh, high beat, uh, very energetic. Uh, actually, the day I was flying back from Reno, our staff was in the local fair parade uh, with a big banner on the side of the bus showing everybody that they were a top transportation team. It's something they're very proud of. They still talk about it uh, almost daily. It's something that uh, had we not received the award, we still would have been fine. But this is just more of a morale booster. Puts uh, South Lewis, who's a little rural district out in the middle of literally mountains, um, to show them how excited we are that we're here. Uh, put us on the map, and make a name for ourselves as bus drivers. You know, oftentimes they're not in the spotlight. They're the the, I feel like uh, our industry is often forgotten when it comes to that, and it really put us back on the map. So you actually so. mentioned um, that it came up during a job interview. Yeah, I was interviewing a driver a, a couple of weeks ago, or a potential driver at that point in time, uh, who, who came in, and one of the questions we always ask when we're interviewing, uh, either the superintendent will ask it or I'll ask it, is why do you want to work at South Lewis? What what makes you want to come here? Uh, and the, the that person came right out and said, well, I saw that you're a top transportation team. I want to be a part of a top team. So, here we are. You didn't, you didn't even, you weren't fishing for that. I, we weren't fishing for it. We didn't put anything out there to, you know, egg him on. We, he didn't see any banners or anything like that beforehand. He saw that in the media. Uh, not that the uh, making that comment secured him a job, but we did hire him. <laughs> <laughs> it started yesterday, right? Is that what you said? Was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday was his first official day. Yeah. yeah. Now you brought up your superintendent, so this isn't something we talked about yesterday. So I really am asking, kind of in the in the dark here. But you know, ha we talked about the community a little bit and how you know it helps boost um, appreciation for what you do in the community. Um, but how about any um, on the attendant? I mean, a superintendent's level, the administrative le level. Um, has your superintendent, do, do you feel like you have a better seat at the table now? Do you feel like, I don't know, how has it helped you internally um, with the leadership? I, I personally feel like it's boosted us. It's, it's uh, in some way, it's kind of proven that it, 
the work that I'm doing here is for the better good. I'm not making anything worse by any means. Um, our superintendent here has been very proactive in recognition for the entire department, showing you know the community that we have a top transportation team here. He, he's brought it to the Board of Education to recognize us. He's, he's assisted with press releases. Um, he's not scared or ashamed or anything else to share that information with whoever walks in the door. That's great. Very good. How about you, Donna? Any other things you want to add to that? I, I think it certainly was a boost to our superintendent to see all of, all of us come together and acknowledge that we're super happy to do what we do. We're proud of what we do. Um, we have a purpose. We have a process. Um, and as our superintendent doesn't always understand us completely or know where we're coming from or what our motivation is or our drive is. When he sees us doing it together as a team, that makes one of his teams, I think, definitely more solid. Um, he doesn't have to deal with us a lot anyways, but I think seeing us all come together and say it publicly was a big deal uh, because you don't always get that. And historically, 30 years ago, we did not talk about our department in our district too often because it was pretty, pretty harsh. We were the hardest people to deal with and a lot of it was misunderstood, but we certainly, I think, have um, taken on a, a prouder um, demeanor rather than a, you don't understand us, so we're just gonna do our job and we don't care what you think. Um, we definitely um, put it together with smiles now and uh, it's very validating to, to be put on the map at this rate. Definitely. One, of the, one of the things that my superintendent wasn't afraid to share is prior to, uh, with, with the previous supervisor, there were almost weekly complaint meetings about <laughs> this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and there was never any good that came out of it. And I think it was a breath of fresh air to see him, see us win this award um, as a proving point that things have really changed and, and morale is at an all-time high. That's good. You said something yesterday, Andrew, I thought it was good. Um, you said a lot of things that were good. Um, <laughs> that morale is a is very fragile, right? Did you say that? I I remember that? So what do you mean by that? And, and how do you uh, protect that? So with, with morale, if uh, there's a negative energy, negative uh, coworker, negative whatever it may be, it really doesn't take much for them to get in and destroy that high morale. Um, yeah. Just just their presence alone can destroy that morale. We certainly had our fair share of negative employees and, and negative minds that have uh, been damaging, but we, we really try very hard to correct those. You know, Maybe there's a conversation that needs to be had with that employee to find out why they're negative and, and use that as a critique to improve our department. And you're gonna not only gonna boost their attitude, but you're gonna boost the group's attitude. Uh, when that morale is damaged, man, it's real hard to get back, um, yeah. real hard. And it takes a lot of work and, and it's not something that can be fixed overnight. Um, so when you're consciously mindful of that morale could be damaged in a minute, yeah. you, you are very careful about and selective about who you put around and who you put into the pot to make sure that that doesn't happen. Very good. Donna, you've made some hard choices. Uh, there's a standing joke you talked about that um, not everybody makes the cut with Donna. Subs may come in. You don't even take every application. And everybody who applies doesn't necessarily get a get a meeting. Um, tell me a little bit about some of those hard choices. One we talked about yesterday that you know had some family connections there. Uh, tell tell the story. Yeah, we um, I I definitely believe all of what Andrew just said. Um, we make a team and all of those pieces, while we're very different and our shapes to our puzzle are, are so unique, but we still have to fit together. That's what has definitely strengthened us um, right from the get-go when I took the position. Um, you know, there were certainly some people that were not happy that I got this position. I'm a different bird. I have um, nicknames like Pollyanna and things like that because I just float most of the time and, and love to make, I, I just want everybody to enjoy what we do. And um, there were certain negative folks and uh, immediately when I took this position, there were three specific people that I said, 
you know, you don't seem happy here. It might, you know, I, I wouldn't mind if you went and found something that made you happy. Um, so, of course, in our, even 20 years ago, um, we never, we were plentiful in subs and things like that, but you always worried about it because it's, it's a long process to get a driver on. You don't want to cut anybody out, but that bad apple is not worth it. It just isn't. Their unhappiness uh, filters through to our children, of course, and the parents, and then it comes back to the admin and to us. So um, three people definitely chose to do something else. And I think, I hope very much so that they found something that made them happier. That's, that's always good. Um, then the standing joke is um, you have to make the cut and you have to be Pembroke because at one point uh, I had one of my husband's cousins as a bus driver and he had some different viewpoints and some different vantages and I let him go. And the department was like, she'll let her family go. It doesn't matter. You have to be <laughs> that criteria, that mentality, that dedication or it doesn't matter if your family or not, you're out of here. <laughs> so yeah, and, and we take it very serious because then the rest of the department was like, yeah, there's no favoritism, there's no nepotism stuff. Um, and- That can and kill morale in a second, right? I mean, that yeah. could really, you had a, you were at a crossroads really, that if you tolerate that yeah. for one person because it's family, but not for somebody else, I can only imagine what that would do to morale and what Andrew was talking about regarding trust and those kind of things. Sure. <laughs> um, so, uh, and you, you also, obviously we talked, you, you, here you are, you're retired, but you're still like on the job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, my family says I'm not good at retirement. Um, but it, it was a great place to do it because we, uh, I needed to, um, I've got, I'm here in North Carolina with my, um, youngest daughter's first grant first child so I'm doing the grandma stuff this nana stuff rules and I like that little bit of freedom um and but I also my heart is not out of what we do and how we do it um it's it's a continuation that um I'll ease out of I guess in the period of time um I hope to get a full-time bus driver job next year when that happens um but that'll still be part-time um, I don't want to lose our Buster the School Bus programs and poster contests and and just that connection with children. Um, if we truly boil it down to why we're doing this, um, I think your heart's full all the time. When you go see those peanuts in the in the primary school or, or go to a chorus concert at the intermediate school and those kiddos are just, oh, their hearts are all over it. And they share that with you and it just revitalizes you as well. So yeah. I, I can't foresee being out of this. Uh, you said something really that about like you have like you mentioned Pollyanna and like you're a joyful person and but you can't expect everybody to do things the way you do them or you know it's an appreciation I guess of um, getting the most out of people but kind of working within who they are. How do you do that? How do you how did you number one come to that realization? Like yeah, everyone should love this job. I love it, doesn't it? How do you not love this job? And how did you come to that realization? Like, okay, everybody is different. And, and then how do you actually cultivate that or call that out of people to bring out the best in, in each person? Well, I made plenty of mistakes, that's for sure, because I, I thought I could, you know, um, give cute little Christmas gifts and everybody would be happy or, um, you know, have dinners and this and that. And in the culture that we had initially, um, people were still questioning how I could, I, I, if I could do this job or not. So that proving ground was, was certainly important that where my heart was, was not, certainly Andrew, you can probably vouch our name is not on the top of anything. People don't look at it and say, oh, that's Donna Hackett's department. It's like, no, it's not about us at all. And um, so individually I made mistakes with people and in my department's very bold. They told me back, yeah, no, this is not a hug day. This is not a put on a smile if I don't feel like it day. I will on the bus, but not in here. Um, so I think I made plenty of mistakes and started gleaning that off of people of their level of contentment or energy is different than mine. And um, I just can't go in there like a bull in a china cabinet. Um, I had to be very sensitive to people. Uh, I didn't put up with bad attitudes well. That was, you know, there's a level that you need to maintain when you walk in this door. Um, 
I really don't care if you're, you know, having a, a great or a bad day. When you get on that bus, you have to have your bus driver hat on and you have to have maintain your level that you maintain on your bus because that's very important. And then to also acknowledge their positives of their bus. Like I said, riding with the other drivers was amazing to see how where their strengths were and then to say, wow, you're really good at this. One year I did a list of come and see me. I made a list and I put a strong point, a strength on that list of each and every one of you. Come and see me and we'll talk about it if you want to. Not everybody came in and did embrace really? that. So like I said, we all have different personalities and some people thought that was just stupid and they weren't going to do it. But the people that really needed it, I think are the ones that um, needed that personal boost. Um, it was my tough people that came in to say, what's good about me, you know? And I had something for each and every one of them. And I didn't hesitate to later on continue that process of, of pointing out their, was it, their hard, was it hard for some to find something for everyone? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes good attendance is all I could say um, because it was rough times. Okay. <laughs> it was rough times. But, you know, you know, you really breathe quietly and I just really appreciate your quiet breathing. I just want to say that. No, that's good. That's really good. Um, yeah. Andrew, you talked a little bit about just your hiring process, your training. You said you have somebody that you really like, but you didn't have an actual opening quite yet. And you're trying to find a way to be creative and keeping them on. But just that hiring process, you know, you can really build that culture at that very at the hiring moment is one of the key moments there where you're pushing that that agenda sure so when we we have our own training program like many districts do uh, but we have our own training program here where we bring somebody in when they're not doing actual hands-on behind the wheel or theory training they're out on the buses with us we, we train them first as a transportation attendant um, primarily so when we don't have training for them to do they're here as a transportation attendant and and what that does for us is before we make the commitment of hiring that person we're able to see how they fit with the team see how their interactions are with kids because that's the most important um, and if it's just not working if we look at that person and go you know they're a great person bus driving isn't for them or uh, oftentimes sometimes they'll make that decision on their own, that this really isn't for me. And it, it gives us that flexibility to say, well, we didn't hire you yet, maybe we shouldn't, or we want to hire you, but we need to keep you here until we have a position open. And so we, we continue to use them uh, almost in a substitute capacity, but more on a full-time basis, just to keep them employed, to get some money into their pocket. Um, and so they don't walk off to the next district and say, hey, I'm, I'm fully licensed because we're all hungry. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to see them go if we really like them so we hold on to them however we can donna you laughed what were you laughing at about like someone may not be quite cut out to be a driver that's the truth you mentioned yesterday like there are i won't name careers but there are certain career type folks that are very capable in terms of driving but may not have the personality to interact with young children getting on a bus like a drill sergeant maybe could be very capable of driving a bus maybe not be the right personality for a uh... yeah yeah and you have to be strong enough to say that to somebody um you know it's it it, it it can run anywhere but you know to admit to yourself that you know i may be better as an indian than a chief you know those are the kind of things that um you have to be able to say to somebody of <laughs> i remember a ceo that i just said oh I know you're a good worker and you're a community member and you're a dad and all this stuff, but dude, I would get fired if you were on a school bus. I just know <laughs> that about you. And so, you you know, hopefully they don't come back too many more times asking and you're like, oh, we already had this conversation. <laughs> Love yes. you, but not, not in the not, school bus. <laughs> not a good fit. Not a good fit. Andrew, you said something I thought was really interesting about letting people know your schedule. I don't want to I want you to kind of share the story, but when your door is closed, people kind of know just why. And, and share a little bit about your approach. You actually held something up. I don't know if you have it handy there, your schedule. Um, tell me a little bit about that, how that came about and, and how that's been received. So um, everybody has that common mindset of 
if the door is closed, he's probably on the phone or your boss is probably on the phone. And I think Rick, you were saying yesterday, you, you automatically go to the worst feeling of they're talking about me and that's why the door is closed, right? <laughs> uh, I remember sitting on the other side of this wall as a driver here and when, when the previous supervisor would close the door, it was, you know, that was a thought that crossed my mind. They're closing the door because they don't want me to hear the conversation. And that's something I really don't want people to, to feel like to think that we're talking about them behind their back because that doesn't promote any positivity. Uh, so one of the things I do every week, every Monday morning, I sit down, I type up my schedule. Um, I put it on what we call our weekly bulletin. It goes out every Monday. Um, so they know what I'm doing. Why is my door closed? Well, right now I'm on a transfinder webinar. Um, it, it says clear, plain and clear right there. Uh, so I, I want to be accountable to our staff to show them, hey, this is what I'm working on. This is where I'm at. If I'm you know, at a meeting in the, in the school building, they know I'm over there. I'm not available for them. I'm not reachable. Um, not that I'm dodging their phone calls or anything like that. So I think that is so valuable. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's all part of being transparent, which you know, we, we talked a little bit about yesterday is, is huge in today's age of technology. Um, and it's something that's very easily done to be transparent, but you have to take the initiative to do it. That's great. It takes effort. I mean, like you typing up that list, wanting to hold yourself accountable that shows a humility but also um like when the door is shut that it does kind of dispel that like worst case scenario and are you know are, are we in trouble or any of that kind of stuff so and it it um it also helps them schedule because like you know i do need to talk to him but it looks like he's got a block of two hours here I'm, it's not good i'll know i'll just come back so even just removing not even the the worst case scenario stuff but just kind of like the frustration like i can never get a hold of him when i need to talk to him Oh, now I know, you know, oh, he's got a window there from 1 to one thirty that I can pop in. Absolutely. Good. Donna, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think um, I think definitely keeping your door open for the most part is, is super important. Um, we need to be accessible. Um, they know we're not going to be in the office all the time because hopefully we'll chit chat a little later about getting out of this office and getting trainings and meeting with other supervisors and other entities in your community. Um, but at the door is that's open because we want them to feel comfortable coming in and talking to us. Ugh, have you ever had a boss that you just did not want to talk to for whatever reason? And your job just doesn't see my job at that time didn't seem to go anywhere. You know, you just didn't think you were going to be able to, offer ideas or ask questions or any of that kind of thing. So that it's part of your transparency is having your door open all the time. And when you do close it and I just have a sign that I flip saying, oh, on another webinar or, you know, in a training of some kind. Um, that I like and there are times when there is a bad day. You have said, you know, um, it's a tough day today, folks. I'm, yeah. I'm dealing with or some personal. Stuff. Sometimes there's personal information that, of course, we can't share everything right. about a student or a staff member so when that door is closed they respect the privacy of that person in there with you um that they're getting your direct attention and that you're keeping something that could be um on a tender note within those four walls you gotta so, have confidentiality let's just go with what you just highlighted a little bit about getting about getting out of the office i know you both do that so tell me a little bit about that as well um meeting the community where they're at um Tell me a little bit about what you do. Um, I have to accredit our New York Association um, for Pupil Transportation. NIAPT was uh, was the one that got me out of the office and into training and stuff. Our, I believe very heavily in our regional, our local state transportation meetings. Our um, regional meeting um, had two gentlemen that were instrumental in getting, I think they saw something like, I like to talk a lot. And uh, I have like to share my ideas, and they saw that in me early on. Uh, Jack Burns from Grand Island and Bob Maury from Lancaster will always be my first cheerleaders that said, okay, let's go. We're going to Albany. You need to go to Albany. You need to get on these committees. You need to learn more about this because we know you'll share whatever you learn. I'd go to things and come back to our department, and they always kind of brace themselves and go, okay, what is she going to do to us now? She just was at a conference or she was just at a meeting or a training or, a, you know, something like that. 
but you ha I believe you have to get out. You should be part of your traffic safety advisory board in your community. You should be part of your board of education. Do you go to your board meetings? They need to know you so when something happens in transportation, they that is when your name is on it. And they say, oh, the principal gets a call from a parent going, oh, this says school bus. Let me transfer you over to Donna Hackett. She's our school bus person. So, you know, you want to have that level of confidence in yourself. So everybody else has that in you. And, and you do want to be that guru about everything. You know, our industry is so vast. And whether it's our, our computer programs or our cameras or our training, any of that kind of stuff, um, we have to be on top of it get out of that office, come to these webinars, get a taste for something, and then take it someplace else. Um, I hope you definitely get involved in your local, regional, and state associations. They are invaluable to update you on uh, regulations and legislative things, and even the fun things that you can do. I love hearing other people's ideas on what they do, or team building, um, or community things, or like I said, Buster the School Bus programs. Um, but I believe you have to get out of your office and go to those conferences, make connections with other people. If I didn't know Bob and um, um, Jack, they were my go-to people. My 19A trainer, um, absolutely instrumental in, you know, you all might have heard of Peter Lawrence. Uh, he's from New York and he was a huge person that would take my calls and answer my crazy questions. Um, Pete James is another one. So you have to have that list of people that you can go to that know more than you. And, you know, I always say partner up, you know, join the team. When I joined TransFinder um, as, our, as our routing and that's turned into more than just routing, that's for sure. It's a team effort. And I constantly learn TransFinder community is, is my go-to on so many things. And then I can call you if I really can't understand something, but... <laughs> You definitely need to, to partner up and get out of the office, share ideas. And now, as Andrew and I can say, we're kind of sharing our ideas with people that is thinking cool. <laughs> that exactly. is super cool. Well, I was thinking about, you also mentioned about even just like bring, you know, you go to conferences and you bring that back into your office. You talked about cats and dogs. Oh, yes. Michael Grinder was uh, also a huge, I guess I have a lot of people that really helped me a lot in this. Um, and uh, he likened people into two categories of cats or dogs and, and how their personalities are, um, which is a definite thing because um, he identified in me that I have a little bit of both. I can be that warm and fuzzy dog and wag my tail and, and support you and help you and cheer you on. Ugh. But when it's time to drop the hammer, I do not have a problem with that either because it's for the corporate good and it's for the good of everybody. And so I have that balance. But when you're talking to somebody, you can talk to two different people about the same thing. And if they're a cat personality or they're a dog personality determines how you're going to have that conversation. And it's outstanding standing as to how that really works it does even in family <laughs> i love that but i also love just that you bring everybody benefits from that when you can bring, go to something it's not just i learned something at that and it just stays at the conference but you come back and you try to incorporate some of that you mm -hmm. know even if you get even like those who are attending today um you get one idea just one idea like you know that's a that's one idea you didn't have before you know that you know may help you know, make things a little bit better at your at your operation. How about you, Andrew? Any thoughts on that? Getting out of the office, things that have worked for you in terms of, you know, um, being just more connected to the community and to your own team. Absolutely. So, you know, I think about this. I think when you look at a school district or any type of educational facility, it is a uh, stationary object, right? The school building doesn't move. The school bus does move, it's out in the communities, it's everywhere. Um, so to sit in your office and think that people are going to come to you is the wrong mentality because our school buses don't wait for people to come to them, we go to them. And you really need to have the same aspect and logic behind how you interact with the community because you're in their, their front yard every day. Uh, getting out of the office, you know, I'll be completely honest, when I first started, that was scary. Uh, I, would commonly say I don't have time for this. Um, but now uh, I'm the chairman of our local traffic safety board, which locally, historically was 
often chaired by somebody in a highway department that were on the highways. And uh, this past year when I became the chairman of it, it really, we need to put school buses in the spotlight. What better way to do that than be right on the traffic safety board and be the front line. Get involved in any aspect that you can get involved in, get your hands in there because you want your staff to be successful and you need the community support to be successful. That's good. That's really good. Well, we're coming to the end here. I want to ask you guys for one final takeaway, and then we have a couple more slides at the very end. But if those who are attending, whether they're going to, they better sign up for the top transportation teams award program. But just in terms of um, building a better team, building a better culture, uh, I'm going to go with you, Andrew, first. I ask you down how to close it. What's one takeaway that you hope that someone will take in terms of this is a what you need to do to lead your team? Absolutely. Uh, with, when it comes to tra top, tran top transportation teams, apply for the award, not because you want to be in the spotlight. Apply for the award because you want to receive that feedback to better yourself and better your team. Um, that was 100% of the basis of behind me uh, signing up for top transportation teams. We're not a Transfinder customer, so I, you know, not that the expectation of the the award was only going to transfinder people. The expectation was, I want to see what we're doing good at, I want to know what we're doing bad at, and I want to concentrate on that. So really use any type of method that you have available to you to build your team to be the best that it can be. And what better way to do it than to be recognized at the same time. That's great, that's great. You also talked about being an advocate, be your team's advocate. Absolutely. Great, and we'll have to change the whole Transfinder customer thing, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> you know, we try not to make these commercials. Uh, but thank you so much, Andrew. That's great. How about you, Donna? Your thoughts? I'm going to go totally off topic of what we've talked about so far and talk about ourselves as as leaders in our in our department. Um, one turning point for me about 10 to 14 years ago was to take on personal health. We dedicate ourselves to a job that takes so much out of us mentally, physically, socially, emotionally, all of those things you want to say. Um, and there is a huge turning point to realize that a weak me, uh, physically and mentally, did not lend to my department's benefit at all. Um, if I'm scattered or I'm short-tempered or I'm not all in the game where I'm thoroughly exhausted and wiped out, that doesn't help. I have a lot of energy naturally but it could go in the wrong direction if, if I'm out of sorts. So taking on some time to personally take care of yourself. For me, it was fitness and eating, um, things I was totally depleted on and didn't do well. Um, so that has cleared up, I believe cleared up my mind, which helped me to clearly think better about the needs of my department. Um, they're, they're my first team, and then we could push that out to the rest. But if you yourself are not a strong leader, um, personally, healthfully, um, for me as well, spiritually, it, it was uh, a definite changing point where my, I believe our department really became congruent, and they started pulling together because I just personally was handling life a little bit better with them. Um, so I just want to tell you that you are important as that transportation person, and um, please value yourself enough to know if your team's going to be strong. It, it does start with you. Um, they, they look at you and see what you're doing. Um, and Andrew, I can tell you're a very calm demeanor and you probably handle things in, in a great um, level headed way. I'm a little nutty at times. And so, you know, um, you know, you got to smooth me out. So really knowing that I'll go work out at four o'clock is a good thing. I, I will settle myself. <laughs> um, yeah. And it helped me to realize I needed to do that for them too. And it also probably gives you empathy for your team that yeah. they need that too. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause if I'm like, well, I don't have time to work out. So why do you have time to work out? But if I'm like, no, I see, I need a value in that. Then maybe you have more empathy also for the team. And they know I want them to be healthy. They really understand that when they tell me, you know, they've got a migraine or they've got an issue of some kind, yeah. my heart goes out to them because I, I don't want them to personally be down at, at any point. And, and I truly do appreciate and value what they do for themselves as well. That's awesome. Well, Bridget, you can move to the next slide. I just want to thank you both so much for your time. Um, 
really value it. I, I, I learned a lot. I know that um, others who were in attendance, it was definitely worth the price of admission, but super great content here. And I do wish you all the best in your, uh, as you apply, I know you're both applying for the next uh, next year's award too. It'd be great to have a repeat. So I'd love that. Um, for those of you who are watching, we'd like to also say, like you know, Andrew already said, you know, this we are always trying to get the best practices, whether you're a transponder client or not. Um, so the goal is always to share those stories. What is working for people? That this is that place where we can share those stories. So if you do have a story of what's worked for you. Um, send it to mystoryoftransfer.com. Um, I may reach out to you and ask you to be a, on a webinar and share your story as well. Uh, we're just trying to, you know, we can find them all at transfinder.com. We've cut, we have so much, so many resources um, from those success stories that we received. Uh, Bridget, if you go to the next slide, um, the next webinar is because Thanksgiving is next month. I can't believe how quickly this year has flown by. I don't know if it's flown by for you guys, but. It just feels like it's flown by. Um, we are having a webinar on a champs. I'm not going to say any more than that, but what's a champ? Um, you can find out on November 14th. It's a Tuesday, same time, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. But uh, come back, mark your calendars for that. You'll be hearing more about that in the future. Until then, I want to thank everybody again. Thank our panelists. Thanks for all the attendees and have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.